Hi, hope you guys are all doing good. So let's move on to our fourth part of paper discussion video series. I hope you guys are all ready. So first topic in this video, organ of Corti, where is it located? Scalar media, let's review some information. As you know, we have external layer, middle layer and internal layer. Internal layer, we have a two components or two parts, which include membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth. And on the left side of the screen, you can see various parts of membranous labyrinth, which include cochlear duct, saccule, utricle, and three semicircular canals. And cochlear duct or scala media contains organ of cotton. Let's review some information. Cochlear duct is a spiral anterior part of membranous labyrinth having two and three fourth terms, which lies in the middle part of cochlear canal between scala vestibuli and scala tympani, hence the name scala media. The cochlear duct contains spiral organ of cotton, which is sensory receptor for hearing. So this cochlear duct, or it's nothing but scala media. I hope it's clear. And on the right part of the screen, you can see cross section of cochlear canal showing boundaries of cochlear duct and organ of cotton within it. I hope this information is useful. Now let's move on to the next topic, Jones of pulp. So this is something which we already discussed in our eight classes and study club discussion. So we have various Jones include uh, odontoblastic zone, starting from the periphery. And then we have cell-free zone or wheel zone, cell-free zone, which is primarily coronal, and then pulp core. And also you can see various major components of these zones consider this very, very important, right? So this is based on information given in now let's move on to the next topic. There seems to be an image-based question on rubber dam frames. So we have plastic frames as well as metal frames. As you can see, let's review some information from Grossman. So the type of rubber dam holder one uses is a matter of individual preference, but whichever one chooses, it should not interfere with endodontic operation. Some operators prefer one that lies flat against patient's face because it permits easy access to operating field around the mouth. Others prefer a frame type of holders made of stainless steel, that is the Young's frame, or plastic, that is Nygaard or Speed, because they can be applied quickly and effectively, as you can see on your screen. So the plastic frames contoured facially have the additional advantage of being radiolucent and do not have to be removed while taking working radiographs of tooth during treatment, during anaerobic treatment, right? I hope it's clear. Now let's move on to the next question or topic, permanent teeth eruption in relation to length of root. So teeth normally erupt when they have reached almost two thirds root length. I hope this is helpful in answering the question. And let me know if you need any additional information. Let's move on to the next topic, Hurler syndrome. This is something which we covered in the form of Lankin stories in E-classes. Hurler syndrome, also called as mucopolysaccharidosis 1. Hurler syndrome is a disturbance of mucopolysaccharid metabolism exhibiting a variety of classic clinical features, as you can see towards the right of the screen. It is characterized by elevated mucopolysaccharide excretion levels in urine, that is says in which there is an excessive intracellular accumulation of both chondroitin sulfate B and heparin sulfate in those tissues and organs where they are normally found and is inherited as autosomal recessive trait. The disease usually becomes apparent within the first two years of life, progresses during early childhood, adolescence and terminates in death usually before puberty as you can see on screen. The head appears large and facial characteristics are quite typical consisting of prominent forehead, broad saddle nose, wide nostrils, hypertelorism, puffy eyelids with coarse bushy eyebrows, thick lips, large tongue, open mouth and nasal congestion with noisy breathing. Progressive corneal clouding is a classic manifestation of disease as is hepatosplenomegaly resulting in a protuberant abdomen. A short neck and spinal abnormalities are typical, while flexion contractures result in claw hand. These dwarfed individuals are mentally retarded, mentally challenged. Right? So this is some information regarding Hurler's syndrome in specific clinical features. Now let's move to the next topic. These are the keywords I received: iron poisoning antidote. So this is from a PubMed index article, uh, Deferoxamine, a chelating agent that can remove iron from tissues and free iron from plasma is indicated in patients with systemic toxicity, metabolic acidosis, worsening symptoms, or a serum iron level predictive of moderate or severe toxicity given IV. And you can see the infusion rate and maximum doses of uh, six grams per day. 
that. So consider this a very, very important. So also you might have heard of BAL, British anti -Lucid. So let me know what uh, it is used for. Now let's move on to the next topic, hair on end appearance. As you can see in this calibrated graph of a thalassemia patient, hair on end appearance. Let's review some information. Skeletal changes in thalassemia are most striking and have been thoroughly described by Cafe as given in Schaefer's. So we have rib within rib appearance and also in the skull, there is extreme thickening of diplo. The inner and outer plates become poorly defined and trabecular within the plates become elongated, producing a bristle-like crooked dog hair on end appearance of skull. And because of lack of hematopoietic matter, the occipital bone usually is not involved. Also, hair on end appearance is seen in other conditions, including sickle cell anemia. Let's review some information. Radiographs of skull exhibit an unusual appearance in patients with sickle cell anemia with perpendicular trabeculations radiating outwards from inner table, producing hair on end pattern, identical to that seen in thalassemia, congenital hemolytic jaundice, and sometimes in chronic iron deficiency anemia and secondary polycythemia of cyanotic congenital heart disease. List of conditions which you can make a note of. So in both the cases, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, you have this hair on end appearance. I hope this clarification is suffice. Now let's move on to the next topic, herbs uh, There seems to be an image based question. Let's review some information. So you can see various components of herbs taplanes and right side appliance in oral cavity. Herbs taplanes is designed to reposition the mandible anteriorly, indicated in treatment of class two malocclusion. It utilizes a pair of telescoping elements which allow the mouth to open but limit posterior displacement of mandible. Unlike many removal functional appliances which are used to reposition mandible anteriorly, herbs taplanes doesn't interfere with speech or eating. Also, since it cannot be removed by the patient as it is fixed, full-time cooperation and compliance is more predictable. And when indicated, this appliance can be used in treatment of class two malocclusion. Okay, I hope this is uh, suffice. Now let's move to the next topic, snake bite. Most of you are saying uh, there is a clinical picture. I don't exactly uh, understand when you say it's a clinical picture. So is it a picture of a person being bitten by a snake or is it the picture of a person who fell uh, as a consequence of snake biting. Uh, please uh, give me more clarification regarding the same. So I have a reference article. If you want, I can share that in the description part of the video. And most of you are asking for uh, symptoms. So I think this information is relevant. So we have uh, local features, general features, systemic features. Uh, once there is snake bite, so let's review some general features. I think that was uh, one of the questions which you received or which you had in your recent exam. First of all, snake venom may contain 20 or more toxins. Most of them are enzymes, non-enzyme peptide toxins, non-toxic proteins. The cobra and crate venoms are neurotoxic and cardiotoxic. Local effects are seen in the former but not in the later. Viper venom is vasculotoxic and has severe necrotizing local effects. The neurotoxins of elapids and sea snakes are absorbed rapidly into bloodstream, thereby causing rapid systemic effects. Whereas the much larger molecules of viper venom are taken up more slowly through lymphatics, thereby causing severe local effects. And most venoms do not cross blood brain barrier. And you can find some general features on screen. See if this is helpful in answering your query. If not, we'll provide you additional information, including the reference article, where you can go through the same for further clarification, okay? Let's move on to the final topic of this video. Equifactor necrosis is seen in which organ and why? You can see histopathologic images of the same and also the gross pathologic image in the bottom right part of your screen. Equifactor necrosis in brain because of uh, action of powerful hydrolytic enzymes. Let's review some information. So liquefactor necrosis or colliquator necrosis occurs commonly due to ischemic injury and bacterial or fungal infections. Occurs due to degradation of tissue by action of powerful hydrolytic enzymes, the common examples being infarct brain and abscess cavity. Microscopically, the pathognomonic cytologic change in all infarcts is coagulated necrosis of effective area of tissue or organ. In cerebral infarcts, however, there is characteristic liquefactive necrosis because of abundance of these hydrolytic enzymes. And in cerebral infarcts, the liquefactive necrosis is followed by gliosis, that is, replacement by microglial cells distended by fatty material, also called as gitter cells. 
And on screen, you can see liquefact necrosis brain, necrosed area on right side of the field shows cystic space containing cell debris, while the surrounding zone shows granulation tissue and gliosis as we just discussed. Right. So these are some of the topics which I wanted to highlight in this specific video. So as we get more keywords, we'll keep working on them and we'll try to get back to you with additional questions, keywords as soon as possible. So, and you need any further clarification, just drop a comment or get back to me. We'll try to update the same in description part of the video within 24 to 48 hours. Appreciate your understanding, love and affection. The best wishes and love. Take care.